It's a really big honor to bring out our first guest. He's the founder and curator. You can find him on Tupelo Street. He has the House of Dance and Feathers. Let's give it up for Mr. Ronald Lewis. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on to our show. I I tell, tell you what, it's a pleasure being here. <laughs> Nashville, New Orleans. That's right. Have you all been to the House of Dance and Feathers? <laughs> you know, I went there to visit last week, and that is, that's a beautiful place you got over there. Thank so you. tell us, how, how did that all get started? Yeah. We're going to go back. This is before Katrina. Yeah, well, pre-Katrina, when me and my wife were both working, and see, making Mardi Gras Indian stuff, uh, it become overwhelming. And one, one day, uh, I didn't know my wife was overwhelmed with it, so I Wait, came. What do you mean overwhelmed? Like in what that, way? See, when you're making the Indian suit, you cut feathers and marabou and stuff that floats all around your house, and you don't clean it up, <laughs> and, and your wife do all of this. So when I came home, yeah, I had an eerie feeling. And, and I wouldn't say anything. So when I made it to the back part of the house, I'd seen it was sort of empty. So I looked at her, and she had that look on her face like, yeah, buddy, say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I, I looked out the back door, and here all of all my uh, memorabilia was in my back backyard. Just out there on the grass? Just uh, the out there on the grass. And I looked at her, and she still said, say something. <laughs> so, so I gathered my sons and some of the young people out the neighborhood. I had a little single car garage. I converted it, and I started the House of Dance and Feathers. Thank you, Mrs. Lewis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what else went on in the House of Dance and Feathers besides storing this memorabilia? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I grew up here in the Lower Nine, a uh, community that I love most dearly, and I came back to it after Hurricane Katrina. And I've been a big brother in my neighborhood. And when I put my memorabilia together, the young people were saying, well, Mr. Ronald, you have a museum. So the light went off, I, I decided to give it a name, House of Dance and Feathers, which is our culture. We dance in the streets and we use feathers to make Mardi Gras in your suit. And my friend Oliver knew about that too. <laughs> you know? And so from that point on, I had a meager beginning. And after Hurricane Katrina, by me and my wife being the first to come back. Then everything escalated. So you were, you were some of the first people to come back yes. in the Lower Nine? When I came back in the Lower Nine, it was me and my wife and a hot plate that she made a pot of gumbo for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, but hey, what I can say, as the people got over the shock of Katrina uh, across America and found out that we were civilized people and we wasn't refugees, we were American citizens. That's and, right. And from that point on, I promised the world that I'm going to continue carrying on this story. And by us being such a great cultural city, that gave me the opportunity through the culture to tell the other story about why we live in the Lower Nine, why we had urban garden when it wasn't called urban garden, mm -hmm. why we had the chickens That's right. That's that right. laid the eggs yeah. that I didn't know was organic. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just life in the Lower Nine. And as people come visit my community and find out that we, we just love our city and we just want to bring it back like everyone else. And I have to say thanks to people like John who invited me to the show to continue telling this story, continue about the rebuild of the Lower Nine and the various people who moving into my community to move it forward to the future and increase the quality of life. Yeah. Now, tell me how, when people were coming back, you know, having to rebuild, get their lives back together in, the, in your community in the Lower Ninth Ward, how did seeing, coming to the house of Dancing Feathers, how did that give them hope and inspiration? Well, well culture is New Orleans. You know, when, when the visitors come to my museum, and, and they, they ask why New Orleans is so unique. 
I said, you could come from New York, Boston, Chicago, any of those places, and you don't be stigmatizing New Orleans. If you decide mm -hmm. that you want to paint yourself purple and run around <laughs> the city of New Orleans, you, they're going to give you a name. And they're going to say, oh, that's the purple man there. You know, and it's OK. You talking about me again? <laughs> So, but but that's, that's New Orleans, as, as I see the influx of artists and everything that come to our city, that, that move our city forward, it, it's, it's something to, to embrace. And by me being a former Mardi Gras Indian with the power of the three and needle, I can refer to other artists. And I can refer to being the president of the B9, telling about how we like to dress up as y'all see. <laughs> and thank you. And say, yeah, we love to dance in the streets. And since Hurricane Katrina, you know, as I could say, the people on the other side of the fence have chosen to join in our party and say, well, you know what? Them black people they have a good time, and I want to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and this is the new New Orleans. And the only thing I can say that the future is great for our city. That's right. Yes. So, so Ronald, I, I came to your museum last week, and you were, he was kind enough. He has this book here. It's, it's a very beautiful book. It's called The House of Dance and Feathers. And you can find it over on you, Tupelo Street. And you can find it here with me tonight. He's got some tonight. <laughs> and Ronald, this is what I want to do for you since his museum isn't just like a museum where you just like go see some dinosaur bones and take some pictures. It's a, it's a living museum meaning people in the community bring things to it. When I was visiting, you had a, 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 a former queen of the Big Nine Social Aid and Pleasure yeah. Club, and you're talking about you got to bring by one of your hats, you know, oblique one, all that. So I want to give you something. This is my culture, yeah. the Good Night Show with John Calhoun, to put in your museum. No, that will go with my green tea. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, uh, and I want to say it. Uh -huh. As everybody make this thing happen, they have a bicycle tour that come by me called the Night World Bicycle Tour. And what that tour have done was bring people into my community, get a chance to hear the story. And, and I'm going to tell you, I have a world-class porta potty uh, that, I call, <laughs> that I call Lady Friend. And, and when they come, I say, now you can eat your lunch, but ladies, this is the only porta potty that Lady Friend needs. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Once again, Mr. Ronald Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you just love New Orleans? Well, everyone, stick around. We're going to be right back after this short break. <laughs>